this subtraction, obviously in the subtraction we want to put the bigger number first. So we should put the mass of the protons and the neutrons separately first in the subtraction because we just figured out that's the bigger mass. The mass of everything when it's together in the nucleus is smaller, so that should come second in the subtraction so that the mass defect is a positive number. Physics is weird, but it's not that weird to say that mass can be negative. So this mass defect here has to be positive. So this is what allows us to find the mass defect. And then how can we use that to find the binding energy? Well, the binding energy is the energy that corresponds to this mass defect. The binding energy is the energy that corresponds to this difference. Well, what's the equation that we can use to find the binding energy if we know the missing mass? E equals mc squared. That's right. So here we have a very small little flow chart here. If you figure out the mass defect, you can plug that in plug that in for m, obviously. You plug that in for the missing mass here in e equals mt squared, and that tells you the binding energy. Because this difference in mass represents this binding energy. Here is a conversion ratio that's going to be helpful to us. One atomic mass unit is equal to 931.494 mega electron volts per C squared. Let's call that 931.5. Now, what, what type of concept do we measure with U? Energy or mass or charge? Mass. Mass. That means this must be a unit of mass. It doesn't really look like mass, but we can see that it is if we use E equals mc squared. What would we get if we solve this equation for m? Let's solve this equation for m. What would we get there? Um, e over c squared. Well, this tells us that if we take units for energy and divide that by c squared, that must be a unit for mass. Well, that's what we're doing here. We know that electron volts and mega electron volts are a unit for energy, and we're dividing that by c squared. So that means that this equation does make sense, and we have units for mass on both sides. Let's try to find the binding energy for a helium nucleus. table that would give us the information we need for that. This table? That's right, yeah. And let's work with this column for atomic mass units. So can I just do e equals mc squared? We can do that once we know what the mass defect is. So okay. the first step is to figure out the mass defect. Even though the question is asking you for the binding energy, our flowchart says that first we'll need the mass defect. How can we figure um, out that? So for the equation, is mass of protons and neutrons separately? Right. So, OK, so that means that it would be. So this is the atomic weight is 4. So it would be 4 minus mass of the nucleus. 4 minus the mass of the nucleus, right. So you're saying, gee, the nucleus together has a mass of 4. That's right. However, we briefly mentioned when we looked at these numbers before that these are approximations. Right. After all, this is the approximation you get when you pretend that a proton has exactly the same mass as a neutron. Remember, they don't really have exactly the same mass. That's simply an approximation that's all oftentimes appropriate. However, for these problems, we can't use approximations. And the reason is that the mass defect is going to be a very small number. 
the mass defect is going to be a very small number. It's not like we're using, losing tons of mass here. So what that means is we can't just say anymore that a proton is a mass of 1u and a neutron is a mass of 1u. We need the actual masses. And that's where our table comes in here. So, so two neutrons and two protons. That's right. Okay. So let's uh, write that out. So we're going to have two protons. And what is the mass of the protons exactly? 1.007276. Oh, it is? Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, you're right. I'm sorry. So say it again. 1.007276. Mm -hmm. Is that the full number? Yeah. Yeah. Because the mass defect is so small, we should not approximate at all. We should use the full number that they provide to us. And minus, I mean plus, sorry. Mm -hmm. Two times uh, 1.008665. This is the neutrons? Yeah. Okay, and you can see both of them have approximately the same mass of 1u, but there is a difference in this third decimal place that's going to make a difference to us here. So here's the mass of the protons and the neutrons separately. And while we're at it, we might as well subtract from that the mass of the nucleus together. Did they give us that information in the table? Uh, yeah. So 4.001506. Now this is something that we could not figure out from the periodic table, or, and we can't just say, oh, the mass is four. Now we need the exact number, so we need to be given all of these numbers. We need to be given these exact numbers. So these are the masses of the protons and the neutrons separately, which were given, and here's the mass of the helium nucleus together. It, it turns out to be a fortunate coincidence that protons and neutrons have almost the same mass. So for many applications, we can approximate them both as one, but there really is a small difference in the masses. And what are the units on that? U. U, because we decided to use the column from the table that's in atomic mass units. There were some other columns, but the most convenient column is the column in atomic mass units. And what does this concept represent? What's the name the of this mass concept? Defect. Yeah, this is the mass defect. We use this equation to find the mass defect. Good. So what we're seeing here is if you separated the protons and the neutrons, they would have a little bit more mass than they did when they were together in the nucleus. Just a, a tiny bit more mass. This is the difference in the mass. Somehow when you put them in together in the nucleus, some of that mass disappears because it's going into binding energy. Well, what's our next step? Now we can use our E equals MC squared equation. Let's go through that together. Now, in order to use the e equals mc squared, squared equation, it turns out that u are not going to be the most convenient units. Instead, it'll be much more unit, convenient to use these units for mass, okay. mega electron volts per c squared. Remember, even though it doesn't look like it, we proved that these really are units for mass. Well, if this is the mass in atomic mass units, how would we calculate the mass in mega electron volts per c squared? Um, you would times that by 931.5. That's right. We can just erase the u and replace it with 931.5 mega electron volts c squared. So now the mass is 030376 times 931.5 mega electron volts per c squared. We know that a U is equivalent to this expression, so we can just erase the U and replace it with 931.5 mega electron volts per C squared. 